So Julie, Clocks is your third album and compared to the big orchestral sound of Pages, there seems to be more focus on a paired back vocal sound here. Do you think you were returning to your musical roots in a way with this album? I think I... Well, the difference between Pages and Clocks is that uh, Pages was more... I wanted just to make a pop album using a chamber orchestra and I wasn't. I didn't want to have anything electronic. I didn't want anything... Uh, I didn't want any other instrument other than a classical instrument from the orchestra. So the amount of orchestration is probably still the same for yeah. clocks, but I did let more kind of water in, as I kind of call it, which is, I felt it was more, I wanted to have more sounds and more sound worlds um, come in. And I suppose it, in the end, it does sound more paired back and there's probably more variety there, therefore, you know. Um, I mean, I recorded all the music in six hours for, the, for pages, but for clocks, I was much more, I let myself listen back to things, and I didn't restrict myself in any way with the instrumentation. I had the same amount of conducting and arranging, actually, because I write all the notes the same way. Um, and then, so I suppose it's, yeah, it's more, there are more, more different sounds in there. So it is very different, it's, and I suppose it's kind of between uh, 13 songs, it's between the first two albums really, the kind of sound and I suppose it's coming together I felt more assured or something I think Yeah. Um, with clocks, I wasn't intentionally trying to pair back, my priority with clocks was to sing my heart out so that's why I did the singing on its own to start off yeah. uh, purely singing with no not thinking about orchestration at all because I'm a ter terrible one for going second clarinet should be this and, you know trombones you know I wanted to I didn't want to let myself do any of that I just wanted to make sure that the songs I even wrote the songs in keys that that I sang you know I sang better and the song just came out better in a different key yeah. so the keys are all over the place on clocks your range I, is huge as well like some of the songs have really low notes going to really high notes like it's well yeah I suppose I wanted to sh I, I go down I go for I go I go from C below middle C to C two octaves above middle C on, on clocks. I actually do the same, I think, on pages, but it's not as, it's not as kind of obvious. But uh, on clocks, yeah, I definitely had wanted to do the range. But a lot of the songs, uh, Cold Water, sounded really crap when I sang it up high. Yeah. It just didn't sound. And then I just sang it down. I think it's, it's either E flat or E, can't remember. And straight away, Ger McDonald was like, now, okay. Now, now we're talking, you know, yeah. and I think that was better to do that because sometimes you can just be doing note, note, note. But I, I really wanted to communicate the words this yeah. time and really think about it. I didn't have enough time to do the vocals on pages. I felt. And you took on this huge task of having ten different choirs perform in ten different venues. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about how that came about and how the choirs were selected and? what kind of challenges were involved in, in organising something like that? Uh, first of all, it was, it was crazy ass. It was really... Yeah. <laughs> it was a wild trip, <laughs> I will say. Um, but I was asked by the Strollers Touring Network to, to put together a tour, um, basically commissioned to do that, to come up with an idea. So they had proposed that I might do a double bill with uh, somebody or something, you know, might have, you know, they came up with a few ideas and then I went back and I just thought, well, I... I felt it would be really too easy to just come up with a double bill. Yeah. Although now I see the sense in doing something like that. <laughs> but um, and I, I decided how about I score my music for because uh, they wanted it, they wanted it to be very different. So I said, how about I score my music for a choir in each of the areas and send the music. Well, first of all, do the do the arrangements, which took a huge amount of time. Uh, and then there were all different choirs. There were male, there were female, and there were mixed. And then I would send the music, the musical director would prepare them. I'd go down for a day. So I did a full rehearsal tour, yeah. 10 places around the country. There wasn't really a budget for that, but I, you know, I just went and did it. And we kind of worked together to make it work because it was really necessary. Did a rehearsal tour, around to all the places, met all the choirs. And then the week after that, did the actual tour. So I brought two musicians with me. Yeah. So it just meant that each day was insane. It was 10 days in a row. So you'd get up in the morning, maybe do press, then maybe go into the venue or radio or whatever, then go into the venue, meet the choir, do a little rehearsal with them, then do my own sound check with my own musicians. And I had and brought an engineer as well, um, Ty Keller and a Joe Brent and Mary Barnicott. 
and we do the sound check and then prepare and then then you'd have to push the choir like you know come on we're going to do this because they had to be part of your show as well so it was very much in that world then do the show then meet everybody afterwards because I always meet people I like to meet everyone so it might be like an hour or two at the end uh, and signing things and that and then in load up well I was blessed with uh, uh, Ty Keller who, who actually loaded everything up and into the the van and off to the next place if you get there and you wouldn't know where you were and up the next day <laughs> Start I mean, all over again. it was mad and wild but I got for me as a performer I learned a huge amount I learned more about my music um, and it's a durability thing this is sort of like resilience say with the music and with the arrangements you find when you do them in different ways you, there are things certain things will stay like inversions in harmony chord whatever you know are going to stand up no matter what way you put them I found that I learned that about I've always thought that about harmony anyway if it's if it's pretty fixed in a certain way then you can play around a lot with everything else yeah. things like that musically I learned a huge amount as a performer I definitely I mean I did a show in Cork about a week after the tour and it was really strenuous because it was there was, was no choir but I was like totally into it and I was like sweating and makeup pouring off and at the same time I could have done another show straight after it because it felt so easy it was just like a breeze yeah so yeah. it was a two-hour show but I actually could have gone again you know because after doing 10 shows in a row you can't get there's so, something momentum. unbelievable about doing 10 shows in a row I did 10 in New York earlier as well at my own with my own ensemble over there but um there is something about stamina you know and you build up your performance stamina which yeah. is like a wonderful thing it's, it's a really good thing to to try and do you know definitely yeah and you're you're gonna have an opera going to production as well this year so do you think kind of organizing that the tour with the, the choirs has that kind of helped at all uh towards the opera or i think uh the, the business with the choirs has made me realize that if you do think big and you actually realize that that thought and that idea you can actually do it so it's made me think even bigger yeah. which is <laughs> probably not good but um i think anything that you think up what the only way you'll know what it's like is if you if you try it like if you try if you try out an idea no matter how bonkers it is and if you, if you have a lot of stuff you can hang on to like a meat the meat if the meat is there say the songs, the arrangements, the, the words and all that, and you have lots of energy, I think you can realise it. So the opera, I had been commissioned the opera just before, so at the moment I'm writing the libretto. I want to try and do that by the end of January. Luckily with the opera I have, uh, director Michael Murphy, who's fantastic, and there are two producers. So it, for me as a composer, um, the, the thinking big is definitely part of it. But uh, I don't have to do a lot of the logistics, you know, I don't have to, because I, I'm as a composer, but um, there's definitely a thing about taking a leap, taking a jump, that in any, if it's any composition or any kind of project, particularly with live, like, you try something live. So I have loads of ideas for the opera now, actually, very inspired over Christmas with a lot of that stuff. So um, it's based on an Oscar Wilde story, but I'm, I'm going to change it around a lot. And do you know when it's going to be ready to go then? Or, or we are, like yeah, well, we're hoping that they've said production 2013, 2014. So I'd say we're probably, we're going into second phase of production, probably February. Um, and Because they'll have to know then at that stage what kind of set it's going to be, what are the forces, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping, I mean, I really should have all the music done, like properly done. I'm not terror for finishing orchestrations the morning of you know um, but you always get that mad inspiration just at the very end when you know the time is up you get some something just comes to you and they're often the, the best ideas but then you have to really carve into those and break them up and assemble them again and to get it to work but um, I'm very excited about the opera actually very excited yeah. I, they wanted me to be in it but I don't think I'm going to be in it now I don't, I don't know I'm going to see how it goes yeah but, uh, amazing yeah, it's called Bird. Yeah, uh, it's based on the Happy Prince, but it's a good bit more birdy cool. Very than good. princey. Yeah, and so just getting back to the album, then um, you released this on your own label now again mm -hmm. on your mid label. So and you seem to be really like with the opera and with the album, you seem to be very involved in a lot mm -hmm. of different aspects of it. So like from the the visuals to the kind of production, you know, 
composing. So how do you kind of manage all of those different tasks on a day-to-day -day basis when you're working towards something, if it's, whether it's the album or opera or a different project? I think multitasking is obviously a, re is a skill that I do have. Yeah. Um, using your intuition a lot, which can make life hell for somebody who happens to be, because they need to know how this uh, chaos is going to work. Yeah. But uh, but you do have to be, I mean, and I'm joking, but you actually do have to be really organised a lot of the time. But you need an awful lot of energy as well. It's kind of why I suddenly, like, well, I'm finding it hard to get into this year now, but there's a real drop in energy. Once once I'm on, I'm on, and I can, and you just fire stuff off. Um, with the album, yeah, I mean, like, it was a huge organisation. I mean, I, I had it mixed in, in L.A. with David Wright's us. Um, there is a huge amount of organisation. I don't think you can really divorce uh, strife, though, from music making, particularly these days, if you're trying to realise an idea. Mm. Um, and the strife can be, how am I going to make this work? No idea. Don't have any money to do this X part, how it? And then something, you just manoeuvre around, but you have to keep sort of spongy, and, and then something comes to you and you, and you make it happen. So it, it means it can, there can be times that are really frantic, but then the great thing is then you can get loads of time where you're just... I mean, your time is your own. It's all coming out of your own head. So aside from having to pay bills, you know, it's pretty much up to you yeah. what way you want to do it, you know? And with regards to finance, the album, you ran a really successful funded campaign um, that got a lot of attention mm -hmm. um, and you did it really well. Like, you, like textbook kind of funded campaign, I think. But would you recommend crowdfunding? Do you think that's kind of the future now for artists? Would you recommend other artists go for it? Or is it something that you kind of put a lot of work in? Or what are um, the only thing, the only kind of negative thing about it is that it can undervalue a project if a man, man on the street thinks that it only costs X amount to make something. Because invariably it costs way more. I mean, I raised, what I, what I raised I think was 23 or 24,000 but it costs me way more. Like I'm still, you know, because you can't, you need to live as well while you're trying to do it. And then of course it costs you an awful lot more. And, um, you know, the LA part, um, it's, you know, there's lots of bits that I'm still like paying back. But I think that it's really important that people have, like take on, it's a responsibility, not, not just your project. You have to kind of, you have a responsibility to the culture of crowdfunding. So I think, um, you know, giving people a clear idea about maybe what it what it costs, but letting them know that there's an awful lot more that goes into it too. Um, it is a wonderful thing. It was just so heartwarming to be involved. I mean, I've met a lot of the funders who came to the shows, and I'm completely humbled by a lot of them. They're really, I mean, they're you know doing things like they'd be, you know, writing into people or whatever. I hear them like right, say, you know, they'd, they'd write to me and say, "Oh, well, I actually requested this or whatever," and I, d I didn't even know these people before. Um, it's it is a wonderful movement, I you know it possibly is a future, but as long as it's kept fresh, I think people shouldn't think oh that's a way to do something or oh, what do you do and take all the boxes. I think if they really get into the core of the project and make it fresh and, and because it is fresh, because something that's coming from your imagination is completely unique and new. So if they keep that fresh, they, the project will be better and kind of vibrant, but also. The, there is a responsibility for all the other people who want to do it as well, you know, yeah, so that course. everything is done correctly. People, funders are respected, um, you know, very much respected and, and brought into the process, yeah. you know. So I don't know if it's if it's the way. It, 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 it mean it will. It, I mean it's going to continue definitely, and it is. It's wonderful for people to be part of it. Yeah, you just absolutely. feel good if you throw in even twenty euros into somebody's project. I just feel it's really creative as well. I think just even the likes of the rewards that funders get, like you know, there's yeah. no limits really to what kind of rewards you can give someone. So yeah, it is good. I mean, I had a really uh, work intensive three weeks just after it before Christmas because I had built into it that you could get Christmas uh, presents in with it. So most of my work was then. Um, then there were a lot of I was singing Happy Birthday to people and. Do video, making little videos on my iPhone for people, uh, but luckily I did manage to, like the sending out of stuff, mo what happened mostly at the start for me. Some people it goes on a long time. But I think it's good to think about it, like realize how much time it's going to take to put three different albums, a badge or whatever it is that you have into an envelope, go down to the post office and write the ad, like 
buy the stamps and postage is really expensive. You know, to think it through, there's lots of them I didn't fully think through. Um, but now I know, you know, so. But it's huge. I mean, it was massive, massive time. You, you really you had to be on it all the time. And never, never pushy, I think. It's important not to be pushy, to just let people know in a nice way about what your project is. But you can't plague people or you can't, you know, you can't go too big or you can't make people feel guilty or anything because they, they don't have to give you money. You know? They actually don't have to. But. I know that you're proud.